A bit of Pilsner to swallow. Yeah, keep that in your back pocket, nice. I like it. So it's another day in craft beer land and another attempt to reinvent the IPA. <laughs> <laughs> We're here again, Johnny. We're here again. You could basically wow. say, I about half of our videos are talking about why this thing is different to an IPA. Uh, and it's no different as we approach the West Coast Pilsner. But Johnny, I like my Pilsners to be from B Bavaria and Czechia and all this sort of beautiful, lovely European stuff. Yeah, and you're right too. But we did predict at the start of this year that hoppy lager was going to be this kind of synergy between wanting drinkability, sessionability, but still wanting big, bold American aroma. Yes. So even if we don't necessarily want that, people certainly do. So it's what you're saying, it can be like a sort of bridging ground from like big, juicy IPAs with loads of hop forward stuff and the refreshing, crispy boys that you get in Pilsners. I mean, that's certainly the theory. Right. The thing to point out is that people have been trying to do that for a long time. Forever. Yeah. <laughs> so this, this idea of like a hoppy lager like we have in front of us is nothing new. I guess the first thing we should do before we crack this beautiful beer is discuss why this one, in theory, is going to be different to all the hoppy lagers that have come before it and indeed all the hoppy lagers that will come after it. Ready for the next video we have to do about this. Wowzers in my trousers, Johnny. I'm a, I'm a little bit confused as usual, about what exactly this is. Mm -hmm. Can we start, like, turn it round the other way and sort of talk about what it's not? Yeah. Right? So that's a German Pilsner. It is. What's the difference between that and this? Well, so this one is, is a one of my favourite German Pilsners. The German yeah. Pilsner should be bready, really drinkable, kind of soft but still sharp bitterness and just incredibly, incredibly drinkable. No real hop character other than that kind of slightly sharp. Yeah, not very hop forward at all, yeah, really. It's lemon, honey, maybe a bit of grass and that kind of thing, but that's about it. That's yeah. all you get from the hops. That's gonna be very different to this. Okay, so it's not a German pills there. Yeah. We haven't got an IPL on the table, no. but why is it not an IPL? Well, so an IPL is trying to be an IPA. It's trying to combine, yeah. you know, the big, bold character and the alcohol of a classic West Coast IPA but giving it a lager yeast to make it even cleaner, snappier, more sessionable. They might drop the ABV a little bit, but really it's trying to be an IPA, but even cleaner. And to me, an IPA has kind of lost its relevance because, or never really had relevance, because USO5, WLP001, like these classic West Coast yeasts are so clean anyway, mm. that an IPL is a small difference. So actually quite a few IPAs we drink might even be lagers, but they just don't tell us because IPA sells. IPA sells. Yeah. That's, so, that's what we know. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. That's one thing we could say as a fact on the Craft Beer channel. So talking about IPAs, Johnny, there's a cold IPA. Yeah. Why is that not the same as this? So yeah, a cold IPA is technically a lager. It's a lager yeast, but it's fermented warm. Yes. So it's almost like an IPK, like an like India Pale Kolsch. Yeah. yeah, right. OK. Um, and this one, again, is in fact, the creators of it said it, they're trying to be more IPA than IPA. So they're using like adjuncts like, like maize and rice to really lighten the body, right. really focus on the hops, um, and to give it an even cleaner yeast profile than even IPL. So this is trying to be an IPA as well. Wow. There's a lot of things going on here, Johnny, and we're not finished yet because we've got an Italian Pilsner. Yeah, so again, we've got the originator uh, of this style, the Italian Pilsner, which is essentially a Czech style Pilsner. So it's got yes. malt body to it, caramel breadiness to it, but then it's been dry hopped with European, continental European hops. So things like Halatau, stuff like that. Yeah. To get big, grassy, lemony, honey, beautiful aromas. And it's a stunning style of beer, but it's big, it's bitter. There's lots of body to it. And it's trying to be essentially a Czech pills that feels a bit, a bit more agricultural, maybe. So it's got, a bit more grassy. what you're saying is it's got more hop profile than, yeah, than because a Czech it, pills. Because it's been dry hopped and it'll have that kind of powdery character as well that like a dry hop beer has. So yeah. it's a Czech Pilsner plus more hops, but more of similar hops. And that's why I like them, I think. Yeah, they're I mean, really good. It's a beautiful style, really drinkable, but really floral and yeah. aromatic, which is, I think, a bit of like a sister to what we're gonna drink now. Yeah. Because this one is all about adding hoppy aroma, but retaining the classic Pilsner, and specifically a German style Pilsner. Nice. Underneath. Shall we have a beer? <laughs> Mate, I need a beer after all of that. Yeah, let's do it. Good job getting through it. So this brewery will know well after our video a couple of weeks ago about underrated UK breweries. Yes. 
This is one of our selections, one of our Patreons as well. Thank you. Um, and this is their West Coast Pilsner. Interestingly enough, the first version they did of this, which I found and loved, um, was not called a West Coast Pilsner. It was called a Hoppy Lager. So they were a bit worried that people might not know what this style is or meant to be, but they're going for it now. So they were they're calling, calling a it a Hoppy spade. Lager at one yeah. point. Now yeah. they've gone for the West Coast Pilsner. They've gone for that, yeah. I like the so, name. So this is predominantly Simcoe and Citra on top of basically the the rest of the recipe is their buckskin, their session lager that they make. Which wow. is a great, really crispy. So I love beer. I love Simcoe and you got one of the big sea hops in there as yeah. well. So it's gonna be big. It's gonna be big bold aroma. It should smell, and it does smell mostly like a really tasty IPA. It smells grapefruity. Really grapefruity. Like like a can of lilt grapefruit. Yeah. Amazing. And I get that little kind of creme caramel kind of thing that I often get from Simcoe, like a lovely rich sweetness. And then there's some juice from the citra. There's definite big grapefruit peel and juice on there from the citra. Mm. But you know, if you smelt this, other than the complete lack of any kind of Munich caramel, crystal malt kind of character, you'd think you were smelling a West Coast IPA, right? Yeah, I've had to turn my hat around backwards because that smells gone to the West so Coast good. It smells so good. Yeah, right. I've gone to the West Coast <laughs> in my mind. Oh yeah. So now we're gonna drink it and hopefully the pills element is gonna show. Okay. Yeah. So where it should hit with big, you know, with the West Coast, like 50, 60, 70 IBUs of bitterness, it doesn't. No. Where it should, you know, those hops, the hop aromatics and the, the multi sweetness should clash and give us a big crescendo, it doesn't. What it does is it finishes light and bright and lemony like a lager. Sure does. I mean, that is super crushable. Yeah. I'm loving the kind of dynamics that are going on there. like. The, the, the sort of grapefruity punchiness of it. And then it all just kind of dies away to like a really quite clean yeah. finish, it's like a, a lager. It's a bit of a technical term, head fuck. Mm. It's a bit kind of weird to my palate that there's so much aroma on that. And there is, you know, there is obviously with that amount of hopping, you're going to have some, some kind of powderiness. You're going to affect the mouthfeel of the beer. It's going to feel a little bit oily, a little bit slick, yeah. unlike a lager. But in terms of actual flavour, and aroma on the finish. Very German pills. It's great. Yeah, and that's why this beer, this style, is entirely different to the cold IPA and the IPL because the IPL and the cold IPA should finish like, a, like an IPA does. Big, bold, aromatic, yeah. bitter. This one is, is none of those things. It's a little bit aromatic on the finish. There's some bitterness there, but it's not in the same kind of mark level. Yeah, I mean, we're talking 30 to 40, like a. Czech Pilsner or, yeah. I mean, German Pilsner would be a little bit lower than that. It's a little bit higher because of the alpha in those hops, but it, it's a very clean and light finish. If you really hate bitter beer, this isn't going to be too much of a challenge. And, you know, th this is exactly the style that I think of when we said in that video right at the start of the year that hoppy lagers of whatever guys were going to be big this year. This is exactly what I had in mind. Like, you could drink pints and pints of this, responsibly-ish without your palate getting too tired. Yeah. Whereas that's definitely not the case of a cold IPA mm -hmm. or, or, or an IPA, you know? I mean, we've all drunk pints and pints of IPA, but we've all felt it. Um, whereas this just delivers that drinkability, that freshness, that endless kind of Moorishness that a good Pilsner has. I think it's, it's a great meeting point of two ideas where you've, you've got that, the summer refreshment of a German Pilsner and you've got that kind of tropical uh, bouquet of, bouquet. <laughs> sure. of uh, you know, an IPA, which I think we all, I think everyone likes an IPA, don't they, these Johnny? I mean, it's, so, it's the signature craft beer style, but yeah, that yeah, comes, yeah. A, now increasingly with its, it's got some baggage marketing wise, yeah. in that it's literally mocked by the 80% of the world that don't drink yeah. hoppy <laughs> beer. Um, but it's also, you know, it's seen as high alcohol, a little bit of a struggle after a couple of pints, mm -hmm. you know, and this is the answer to that. This is also a response to, you know, the fact that macro beers are probably having, I wouldn't say they're in resurgence, certainly not, bud. Uh, but, you know, we're not winning the battle for hearts and minds like we thought we would be by now. Yeah. And I think this is a way to do it, to go like craft beer, hoppy beer. I shouldn't say craft beer. Craft beer is a very diverse uh, scene. Hoppy beer does not need to blow your palate or get you exceptionally drunk. No. I love, Johnny, that it's come from a North Wales 
small independent craft brewery uh, that have come up with a style that they're dubbing West Coast. Yeah. Well, oh, I mean, I mean, this isn't the origin. No, Do you right, want to yeah, hear the origin yeah. story? Go on. Go on. So it. the origin story is Highland Park Brewing over in California. Yeah. They were trying to come up with an idea for an exciting beer to serve at a, a festival. And they, I, I guess time was running out or they had no inspiration and they looked at what they had in tank. Uh, and clearly didn't have much that was special, but they did have their house West Coast IPA and their house Pilsner. And so the first West Coast style Pilsner was literally a blend of those two beers. A literal meeting we, of beers. Exactly, and that kind wow. of explains like both the origin, but also the character of this style really, really well. Um, and it was apparently a huge hit at the festival. It's called, I think it's called Timbo Pills. Not quite sure where the Timbo bit came from, but they, they drunk it and realized that there was something to be said for a beer that delivers the aroma of an IPA, but the experience of a lager. The IPLs and cold IPAs and even Italian Pilsners were yeah. quite offering. Do you think Timbo Pills, did that come after Tipo. Oh, uh, Tipo's an old beer, like yeah, 20 so years old. Or, maybe it kind of sounds a bit like that. Maybe they just took inspiration. Uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of process, mm -hmm. very, very similar. In terms of recipe, very, very different. Yeah. But the, the inspiration, the aims behind it, which is to create a more floral, more excitingly aromatic lager, is the same. Whereas, you know, the, the inspiration and the techniques and the recipes between that and IPLs and cold IPAs yeah. couldn't be further removed, really. Um, so yeah, the, these two guys are very similar and offer a very similar thing, like big aroma, big drinkability. Do you know what I love about this, Johnny? Is it's like a sort of raging river, right? And each bank, you've got IPA on one bank and you've got lager on the other bank. And then you've got this really well-placed stone in the middle. Oh, right, okay. Which is the West Coast Pills. And it bridges perfectly the sort of raging torrent between the, the lager drinkers and the IPA drinkers, where I think both camps can agree that that's a safe yeah, harbour in the middle of a raging river. I feel like the metaphor's got mixed towards the end. A safe harbour that's a stone in the middle of a river. Raging river. <laughs> a raging, raging river. And it could, you know, this could be a gateway beer for hop, hoppy beer exactly. lovers towards lager and, and for lager away. lovers towards hoppy beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's quite a powerful beer style. I think that it's done beautifully here, and I've had lots of other great ones. Pressure Drop have done a great one. We had another great one from Andy at Elusive, his Citra Pills. And if you see Citra Pills, it's probably a West Coast style, uh, West Coast style Pilsner. Um, and yeah, I would not be surprised if this became a very, very common beer on tap. And I'd really, really welcome it because yeah. it's right up my street as well. It delivers, you know, I'm a hop and lager lover. Those are my two great loves. Um, and they're combined into one sessionable ABV beer it's brilliant it's it's a bit of a game changer as far as i'm concerned see so yeah, i hope that has explained to you the difference between all these different new kinds of ipa lager hybrids i hope it's got you as excited as as us about this style i'm sure it won't be the last time that this features on the channel maybe there's a homebrew episode in this as okay. well um it's going to be very difficult technically to pull off uh, but wild horse have absolutely nailed it um and yeah i guess drink drink more hoppy lager folks bring on the summer could um, be the future see you up for it cheers cheers plus nastravi and cheers all the cheerses for these different styles <laughs>